Welcome to the Organizational Pill. Episode 3. 5 Minutes of Great Knowledge for Change Consultants Who Want to Influence the World. Created by Eric R. Buhler, author of the best-selling book, Leading Exponential Change. Today we will talk about dealing with psychopaths and narcissists during change. Many change consultants believe that coaching works with most people. But this is not the case if the employee is a psychopath or narcissist. Because consultants don't know about these individuals, they don't understand how to deal with them either. Psychopaths are a long way from what you see in movies and might surely be part of your day-to-day -day life. Any organization that has a high number of toxic psychopaths or narcissists will find it difficult or impossible to build a healthy culture. As we saw in episode 2, healthy people follow the mindsets in the pyramid of the change journey, but psychopaths or narcissists take a different road. These individuals have more impact on the speed of change in your company than any framework or practice you're thinking of implementing. What is a toxic psychopath? They are individuals who have a personality disorder, usually not recoverable, that does not allow them to feel empathy, guilt, or remorse. Ultimately, they don't have emotions like you, assuming you are not a psychopath. Most of the feelings you see on these people are simulated to manipulate you and those around you. They always see others as objects that help them to achieve their personal goal. In my experience working in companies in different parts of the world, I have come across and can almost recognize many of them or at least individuals with narcissistic or psychopathic traits. You should keep in mind that a person with psychopathic or narcissistic traits is not the same as a psychopath. In contrast, the former can change their attitude towards positive behaviors. A psychopath can usually be recognized by the lack of empathy, guilt, conscience, or remorse. Their emotions are superficial, and they switch quickly between often contradictory ones when they observe that the current feeling does not get the expected benefit. They are impulsive and try to defer gratification toward others to create an emotional dependence on them. They have superficial charm, especially the first time you meet them. Generally, do not accept criticism or responsibility for their actions. And finally, they have high self-esteem. In my opinion, coaching a psychopath is as dangerous as giving a loaded weapon to a monkey. In a company I helped in London many years ago, the psychopath controlled the emotions of others during their retrospective meetings to serve his personal interests. So be careful during times where individuals are more vulnerable. Psychopaths also have different patterns of brain activity than healthy individuals. Specifically, they exhibit less activity in the amygdala where fear is processed, and in the frontal orbital cortex or regions where decisions are made. They prefer companies where they can accumulate more power or money, make up about 1% of the population, and are usually men. Studies indicate that in executives, psychopaths can account for up to 20%. As you probably know, agility requires execution with purpose, powerful visions, and goals that involve feelings and inspire people to move forward. Where organizational change is taking place, and there is a psychopathic leader, the focus is more on processes or structures. You should always pair up with a mental health professional in the company if you believe there is a toxic person in a team. They will certainly help you create a good strategy to deal with the situation. There are also some actions you can take regardless of whether in a team there is a psychopath, narcissist, or simply someone with conflicting behavior. First, try to understand their motivations and use the pyramid of change journey to see if they can start slowly supporting good habits. Second, Make sure the team has clear working agreements and explicit values that promote healthy interactions. 
Third, trying to understand the team's past and present, and had crucial conversations with the individual to consider actions such as moving the person to another area of the organization. Keep in mind that there are people with low levels of psychopathism and narcissism that can become good colleagues and leaders. Remember that you cannot diagnose if the person is one of them, even if you consider them toxic. These things must be always addressed by the mental health professional in your company. In the next episode, I am going to show you eight different techniques that a product owner can use to convey a no message without saying no. If you enjoyed it, share it with your network. In the meantime, it might be a good idea to grab a copy of Leading Exponential Change to go beyond Agile and Scrum. See you soon.